hope you're all well and blessed to the Most High. My name's Ovadia, and I'm with Sabbath Keepers Fellowship. Uh, we're beginning a new Torah cycle. This week is Parshoth Breshith, the Torah portion in the beginning from Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 6, 8. It, it's always a great time to start the Torah anew. It's wonderful to finish it. It's wonderful in the middle. But uh, we love beginning it and starting over again. Every year, learning something new from the Word of the Most High. Since this is the beginning of a cycle, uh, I'm hoping to give a little bit of an overview uh, for you to help you understand a little bit more of the commandments, why we need to keep them, uh, and what the scriptures have to say about that. Uh, the, t the lesson today is on Parshoth Breshith, uh, but before we get started, let's have a prayer. Father Yahweh, we come before your throne. We thank you so much for this day, this day of rest. Rest and gathering, a mikro kodesh, a set-apart gathering of your people. Some of us are in places where we, we can't gather together physically, Abba. Or at least not where we'd like to, or with all those we'd like to. We ask you to soon make it possible that we can all do that. And in the meantime, please accept our humble efforts at gathering in your name, sharing your word, fellowshipping, and having a day of rest together. We ask you to open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to see wonderful things from your Torah. In Yahushua's name, Amen. Uh, for the lesson today, again, beginning with Breshith, which is one word in Hebrew, it's a compound word, and it means in the beginning. In the beginning is a great place to start, uh, rather than somewhere else. Unlike most books, a lot of people tend to start in the middle or towards the end of the book, which is just a silly thing. We're starting right where we're supposed to, at the beginning, the very beginning. Baruch Torah. Blessed art thou, Yahweh our Elohim, who gives us the Torah. Uh, the title, Breshith, from uh, our Torah portion, is the first significant word, in fact, it's the very first word, in the Torah, in the scriptures. Uh, and it's from... Uh, the, again, the, uh, the study is chapters 1, uh, 1 through 6, 8. And that first verse says, Breshith bara Elohim et Hashemayim et Haretz, which means, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. The parasha is about the creation of the universe, the world, specifically of mankind, it details the events of the descendants of the first man, Adam, up to the great time of the Great Flood. Uh, there, uh, of the commandments, we'll be studying uh, first the, uh, the command that is found uh, in, the, in the 613 as given by the Rambam, Moshe ben Mamon, and according to most scholars. Uh, it is... And there are only one, or is only one, to have children with one's wife. Breshith 128, which says, And Elohim blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over all the creeping creatures on the earth. Now, uh, on the face of it, that sounds like a lot more than one command, and it could easily be, easily be split into several. Uh, to be fruitful, increase, multiply, have children, uh, and fill the earth, uh, to subdue it as well as fill it, and to rule over the fish and the birds and over all the creatures on the earth. 
Each of those could be construed as an independent command. However, the Rambam sums them up, and uh, it's uh, it was the only command given to Adam uh, in the garden. Uh, well, save one other that is not counted, but it's the only one which is counted, and the only one that's... Uh, Acknowledged within the entirety of those first six, cha six chapters of the, well, five and some chapters of the Torah. Uh, I don't think that the command needs much other explanation. Uh, it's a command to have children, if possible, if you can, if you're able, and if you have the opportunity. Obviously, if you can't or don't, uh, the command can't be construed as binding upon you. But we're not to sit static in our families, in our communities. We're to grow and increase. And every time that a new child is born and brought into our communities, we increase the people in the kingdom of the Most High. So it's a great command. And that's the only one that's counted by uh, the rabbis in the parasha. There are, uh, by my count, three uncounted, uncounted commandments in Parshoth Breshit. Uh, they are, one, that Adam and Kava should not eat from the tree of knowledge of excellence and evil. This comes from Breshit, Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And it says, and Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Eat of every tree in the garden, but do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of excellence and evil. For in that day you eat of it, you shall surely or certainly die. Now, the reason that this command was not counted by Moshe ben Maimon, the Rambam, uh, is that it was a one-time command uh, for Adam and Kava, Eve, in the Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden. And so it's not, uh, it's not binding upon us. You could spiritualize it and find uh, ways to honor that command uh, yourself uh, as you think best, but the physical command is, of course, no longer possible. There's uh, somewhat of a barrier between us and Gan Eden at present. And uh, we won't have access to that place again until the Olam Haba, uh, after the Messianic reign. The second uncounted commandment uh, is that uh, man shall rule over woman. Uh, I'm sure that will uh, cause a bit of controversy among you. I didn't write it. The Most High did. Uh, Bereshi 3.16 says to the woman, he said, I greatly increase your sorrow in your, in your conception. Bring forth children in pain and your desires for your husband and he does rule over you. Uh, it's a, certainly a command. That's how the Most High set up the world and the universe and uh, our responsibility is to obey it not rebel against, explain away, or dispute it. Uh, how that is done, he doesn't say. And, of course, between any two human beings, a relationship should be two ways. Uh, you decide how to work that out. I know that the writings of the apostles... Uh, say that uh, a man should treat his wife as the Messiah treats his bride. And I think that that is the, probably, I, I can't speak for the Most High, nor for his Messiah, but I do believe that that is the reason this command was given, uh, so that we have that model, that pattern, that idea, something to relate to. And indeed, uh, while a man is commanded to rule over woman or his wife, uh, that should be to her advantage more so than his. 
Being in a leadership position while coveted by many is not the most comfortable. It's not the best place to be. It's usually, most often, not a fun place to be. That means that the man cares for his wife, just like Messiah cares for us. He gives her everything, even his life, if necessary. Uh, that she should be showered with excellent things and the best treat- treatment that a, a person could ever hope for. Uh, I don't think that's a disadvantage to her at all. In any case, that's the, the uncounted commandment. The second and the third would be uh, that man will labor intensely to produce food, uh, the plants of the field. Breshi 3.17-19 says, Cursed is the ground because of you, and toil you to eat of it all, your day, all the days of your life. And the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you are to eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you'll return. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, you could say that was another advantage to being a woman, that uh, a man, for his part, uh, he's going to toil and sweat to earn his living. Uh, a hard life for him. He shoulders the responsibility for the family. He pays the price when anything goes awry. Which, with much responsibility, uh, much is required. Uh, those are the total of four commandments given in all of Parshath Breshith. Uh, Five plus chapters of the Torah. Not a lot. <clears throat> but, uh, in Yahweh's wisdom, that's what he chose to give us in the beginning. Now, why would that be so? Why not just lay out the entirety of the Torah uh, from the outset for mankind? What's he, what he expects of us? Well, I think we'll get into that, since we just got started today, and we have, I mean, we're in the beginning after all, and uh, we have a little extra time. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, we'll talk a little bit about those commandments, why they were given, the way they were given, at least insofar as we can know that. I have a few uh, a notes I'd like to explore with you on the subject. And it'll help us begin this cycle of Torah reading and put things in perspective for you, I hope. <clears throat>